Hey girls, so for our extension lesson today, we're going to be looking at combination. So last lesson we looked at permutation, right? So let's have a look at the difference between that and combination today, okay? Uh, before I explain what combination is, uh, let's have a look at this example from last lesson. So let's say we have three people, A, B, C, in a race. In how many ways can first and second place be filled in a race, all right? So we obviously know that means we, have, we can have the first place and second place spot. And obviously because there are three people, we can have any of the um, three people being first and any of the two people being second. And then all we did was just times those two, which is six ways. And we learned from last lesson, this can be also expressed as three P2, yeah? Three for being the number of people and two for being the number of spots available. And that's six ways, okay? Now let's have a look at the difference between this problem, right? And this one. Same problem, let's say we still have ABC people, but the question is in how many ways can two athletes be chosen from the three people? I want you to think about that one. So I still have two spots, right? And as usual, um, we still have three people, so any of the three people can be chosen. And then for the second athlete, any of the two people can be chosen. So you would think it's still six ways, but it's actually not quite six ways, because have a look at this, right? In three people A, B, C, I can have a, I'm going to write out all the lists, okay? I can have A, B being chosen, or I could have B, A being chosen. I can have A, C being chosen, or C, A being chosen. I can have B, C being chosen, or C, B. Now, in this scenario, these two are the same thing. Choosing A and B is actually the same thing as choosing B and A, because the question says, how many ways can two athletes be chosen? So if you choose A and B, it's the same thing as choosing B and A because you've got those two same people. It doesn't matter which order you get those people as long as you get A and B. Sorry, there's a fly. As long as you get A and B. So it doesn't matter. So this is considered actually one way, okay? Same thing here. If you get A and C, that's the same thing as getting C and A. It doesn't matter which order you get those people as long as you get those two people. So that's one way as well. And same thing with this. B and C is the same thing as CB. So in fact, there are actually three ways, not six ways. So to calculate that, what you actually got to do after you get the three times two, you actually got to divide it by two factorial or two times one, because this is the number of ways in which two people can be arranged within each other, okay? So if you divide by two, that's three ways, okay? And that's, um, that's what combination is. So this can be written as uh, three people choose two. And if you put that in the calculator, that will give you three, okay? To put this in the calculator, you press, you press three, shift the division sign, and two, okay? So, um, yeah, so that's combination. When the people you get, the position or the spots doesn't matter. Whereas here, each of the spots matter because this is your first place finisher. This is your second place finisher. So each of the spot matters. But here, the spots don't matter because you're just getting any people in any order. Yeah? So that's what it means. If the order does not matter, in other words, the position of each spot doesn't matter, that's called unordered selection. And for unordered selection, you use combination in CR. Okay? So the, spot, the, so the steps that I like to break it down is draw the spot and then you read the question and go, does each spot matter? If it's no, combination. If it's yes, permutation, okay? So it is very important to be able to distinguish between the two because sometimes in the exam, they'll give you all different types of questions to see if you know the difference, okay? And one more thing, we'll use this later on. The definition of NCR is N factorial over that. Last lesson, we had NPR and that's just N factorial over n minus r factorial. With combination, you've got the extra r factorial at the bottom, okay? Which in this case is like the two. You're dividing by two factorial. All right, so let's move on. Let's have a look at example 13a. There's a committee of two is chosen from Scott, Rachel, and Frankie. So I've written the letters of those people. In how many ways can this be done? So once again, you, I've drawn two spots because committee of two. Again, you're just choosing any two people within three people. So the question is, after you drew the spots, does each spot matter? 
No, it doesn't. You're just getting two people or in any order you want. It's just a committee. Okay, so that's just basically the number of people C and the number of spots. Okay, and that's the same answer as um, three ways. Okay, whereas for example, a question, a similar question where each of the spot mattered would be um, two people is chosen, one for captain, one for vice captain. That would be permutation. So that's like another typical question. Okay. Example 13b, there are three vacancies on a school council. Okay, so three spots out of eight people. Um, if the vacancies are filled at random, how many ways can this happen? So once again, um, each spot has no significance. It's just three vacant spots. So it's just 8c3. Okay, and make sure you put in the calculator. That's um, 56 ways. Okay. All right, let's have a look at example 14a. A bag contains three white and two black marbles, labeled that. If two counters are drawn out of the bag, in how many ways can this happen if order is not important? Okay, so the way to look at this question is there are three white and two black counters. So in other words, there are five total counters, okay? And you're choosing two out of the bag. So that's basically all it is, okay? Ten ways. Let's have a look at example B. If 12 coins are tossed, find the number of ways of tossing seven tails. Okay, so with this question, it sounds slightly different, but here's the way to look at it. So I've drawn actually 12 spots here because when you toss 12 coins, you can get a different outcome for each. So if it says how many ways of getting seven tails, so you can have like the first seven being tail, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the rest can be heads. Or these tails can be in any order, it can be filled out in any order you want. We could have the last seven being tails, we can have the tails being here, 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 here. 12, choose seven, okay? So it, it doesn't matter where you get the tail, it's not spot specific. You can have seven tails scattered anywhere around these spots. So once again, it's combination. So it's just 12, choose seven, okay? So that's 792 ways, all right? Now, let's have a look at example 14c. A committee of five people. So when you see the word committee, you know it's like combination. Combination of five people is chosen at a random group of 15. In how many ways can the committee be formed? Once again, that's just 15c5, okay? And that number is 3003, okay? I uh, just wanted to let you know another way of writing 15c5 is the same thing as writing like bracket, okay? Oops, sorry. Okay, so some books use that notation, some books use that. I prefer that, but yeah, so just know this means the same thing as combination. Okay, if the group consists of nine senior and six junior students, so this time we've got something specific, nine senior and six junior, in how many ways can the committee be formed if it is to have three senior, so out of the nine senior, you support, you need, we need to choose three senior and two juniors in it, okay? So because we've got two separate categories, we've got to work them out separately. So all it is, is from here, that's just nine, choose three, and then you've got to multiply it by this, okay? Six, choose two, all right? So if we've got different categories, do it separately and multiply them. And um, if you do that, that many ways, okay? All right, here's a question that I really wanted to show you guys. Example 14, D. A team of six men and five women is chosen at random from a group of 10 men and nine women. So let me just set it out. So I've got 10 men and I've got nine women. And from here, I need to choose six men and I need to choose five women. Question I, if K and Greg both hope to be chosen in the team, Find the probability that both will be chosen. Okay, so I've written a little note here, but before I explain that, so assuming K is the woman, Greg is the men, all right? Let's have a look at, um, let's have a look at the men scenario. Let's have a look at Greg. So if both needs to be chosen, that's a question. That means Greg has to be chosen from the 10 men, right? So that means, um, you need to change this. So if Greg is chosen, that means we now need to choose five other men and it's not going to be out of 10 men because Greg is chosen and locked in. 
it's actually nine men, okay, to choose the other five men. Does that make sense? Because Greg's already chosen, all right, which also affects the number of men you need to choose. Now, if um, same thing for women, if K is chosen, that means that leaves you eight women left with um, four women to fill the other rest of the spot. Because K is already chosen, you deduct one each from the total and the chosen number. Does that make sense? Okay. So what you do now is you multiply these two. So that's 9C5 times 8C4. Okay. Which is 8,820 ways. So that's what I wanted to show. Let's have a look at the difference between this question and the next one. So in DI, neither will be chosen. So K and Greg are not chosen. So let's have a look at it one at a time again. So remember we had 10 men to, and then we got six men to choose from that and then nine women and then five. How do you think the numbers will change here? I did write a note, but let's think about it logically. So let's talk, think about Greg. So from 10 men, if Greg will not be chosen, okay, doesn't that mean that will leave us with nine men to choose from, but we still need to choose six men. Okay, does that make sense? So, yeah, so because previously we had five men, but this time, because Greg will not be chosen, uh, we still got six other men that we need to choose, but out of nine men. Okay, same thing for K. If K is out, instead of nine women, that leaves us with eight women to choose from, okay, for the five women spots. So this is how you do it. So that's the note. If neither is chosen, deduct one from the total variable. Whereas if both need to be chosen, you've got to deduct one from the total and the chosen number. So if I multiply these two, that's obviously this just 9C6 times 8 choose 5. And that is, okay. All right, so those examples should be enough to get you through the questions in the exercise. Now let's have a look at a um, proof question, the very last question in your exercise, okay? Prove that is equal to that, okay? Just before I move on, um, this sometimes instead of, sometimes books use K, some books uses R, which I had in the previous side of the board. Just letting you know that the same thing, okay? It's just a matter of preference, okay? So don't be mixed up. So they want us to prove that. So let's rewrite everything in terms of C's because that's my preference. So prove this added up is equal to that. So that's n minus k factorial, k factorial is equal to, let's, these, let's write these out separately, blue. So n minus one goes on top, that means n minus one factorial over, um, now see how I had n minus k for this? Well then that would be that minus that. So that's um, n minus one, I'll put in a bracket, minus k minus one factorial. So I've done the first part. Now the second part is just that. Okay. Let's do the same thing for this bit. So the top is n minus one factorial over this minus that. So let's write it in a bracket. n minus one take away k times by k factorial. Yep. Okay, so let's start simplifying the bottom here. Um, n minus 1, so minus 1, minus minus 1, that's just, n, uh, that's just gone, it's just 0. That just leaves n minus k factorial. And then the next one, plus n minus 1 factorial. Can I simplify anything here? No, I can't but I do want to write everything together. So that would be n minus k minus one factorial, yeah? k factorial, because I don't want the brackets, I want them together. Let's have a look at the common denominators now. So, um, let's compare this at a time. So obviously this is the bigger one than that. So that means this needs, see how this is like n minus k, this is n minus k minus one. That means this needs to be multiplied a further n, um, n minus k. Okay, to get to n minus k factorial. Because remember, this is like 
this is like 3 factorial, this is like 2 factorial, so this is like 2 times 1, and this is like 3 times 2 times 1. So, yeah, so you have, like a 3 is your n minus k, so that's what I'm multiplying here. And this one, obviously this is bigger than that, so this needs just k, yep. So times the top and the bottom by k for this one. So, if I do put all of these together, the common denominator is n minus k factorial, remember, because that's the bigger one between these two, and between these two, k factorial is a bigger one, so that's my, um, yeah, common denominator. Um, with that one, I can, let's just write k n minus 1 factorial plus that. Now, can you see what we need to do? Just like last lesson, um, we can now factorize it, because these two are common, so n minus 1 factorial is common, k plus bracket, yeah, can you see how we're getting the answer now? So obviously k take away k is 0, so that leaves n times n minus 1, remember n times n minus 1 factorial is just the same thing as writing n factorial, yeah, remember that? Because this is like doing 3 times 2 factorial, so adding 3 on to the series makes it 3 factorial. So the answer is just n factorial over n minus k factorial k factorial, which is equal to the left-hand side which we have, okay? So yeah, um, as you can see the techniques we did here, it's very similar or almost the same as what we've done last lessons. So you're always going to need to use that kind of techniques in these type of proof questions. Okay, girls, um, that's the end of combinations today. Give the rest of the exercise a go and let me know how you go. Thanks.